Hi there guys, welcome to my channel Healthy Lifestyle Recipes and welcome to this vlog on the Monastery of Alcabasa in Portugal. I hope you enjoy. So here at the Alcabasa Monastery, it was one of the most important Cistercian um, buildings at the time and it was the first entirely Gothic building in Portugal and it was founded in 1153 although construction only started in 1173 so it's an absolutely fantastic uh, building full of very rich Portuguese history so it's fantastic and I hope you enjoy this vlog. So I'm just scanning here the facade of the main church. Now the Baroque restoration was completed in 1725 and it sort of gives the facade its monumental and classical appearances. Now either side of the Gothic portal there, there are two statues, one of St Benedict and the other of St Bernard. Um, they, they represent the cardinal virtues which are fortitude, prudence, justice and temperance. And obviously this is just the square just outside the Alcabasa Monastery. And here um, I'm just walking up towards um, the church. It was built between uh, 1173 and 1233 to 52 in three phases. The vaults of the naves are um, over 20 metres in height. It gives it a really sort of majestic impression. And this here is the Chapel of St Bernard. Um, this altarpiece is called The Death of St Bernard. It's one of the best works of the Alcabasa clay artists. So this is the tomb of King Pedro I. King Pedro I was the King of Portugal and he died in 1367. Um, the front of his tomb here is called the Wheel of Life and it sort of illustrates his life regarding his passion for his um, lover Inez up until his death. And this is the tomb of Inez de Castro, uh, who was his lover. Um, she was executed in 1355 by order of his father, King Alfonso IV, and the tombs are sort of um, parallel to each other, and they sort of represent their tragic life uh, together. And here I'm just following on just from where the tombs were. As you can see, um, there's very interesting statues all around the monastery. And this is the King's Hall. It's quite sort of an austere space um, and it's actually sort of a church hall-like, but its architecture is typical of an erudite genre um, and it was uh, from the latter half of the 16th century. All around it are statues of the kings of Portugal. Uh, that's just um, some art, uh, modern art, sort of in the middle of it. They had a display on by Cristina Rodriguez. The walls are covered with Rococo tiles depicting the monastery's legendary founding. And this here is the Cloister of Silence. Obviously it's called, called the Cloister of Silence because the monks monks had to remain silent it's actually the sort of the center of the um, monastery because it's linked to all of the facilities um, and it was built according to the old structures um, in the 13th century and the water basin just there in the middle is one of the few renaissance works um, and they used it because they had to wash their hands before meals and moving on to the kitchen here and this large vertical structure is basically a large Baroque chimney uh, covered in tiles. And at the other end of the kitchen, this is basically a tank um, with water diverted from a water channel, thus exemplifying the complexity of the monastic water system. Um, the medieval kitchen was also plated, located near the cloister of King Alfonso VI. And next to the kitchen is the refectory, one of the best examples of medieval architecture. The portal has a bottom frame with the following inscription in Latin, consider that you eat the sins of the people. So this here, uh, what you've just seen, is the monk's dormitory. And now if you just follow me through, this here is called the Cardinal's Cloister. Beautiful, beautiful bit of greenery garden here. 
Now, the monks first moved into the Alcobasa Monastery in 1223, and they followed a lifestyle that comprised of prayer and manual labour. And they chose the location in Alcobasa because of the great agricultural potential, and also it was in tune with the Cistercian policies um, of agricultural development. And this is the cloister of King Dinis. In 1308, King Dinis ordered this, the largest cloister uh, of its time in Portugal, to be built. And in order to reflect the simple monastic life, I've developed a really simple, easy recipe, uh, which a monk would probably enjoy. So for the recipe that I've chosen to re reflect a monk's very simplistic lifestyle is eggy bread. Because all you need is four eggs, some French bread and some seasoning. I hope you enjoy. So we're starting off by using just three eggs at the beginning. Uh, choose a sort of flat dish like this, not a rounded bowl. Whip them up and then with a uh, French bread, or you can use any sort of bread, but we've chosen French bread like this in order to sort of cut it in half like so. And then after that, you sort of cut it into long fingers. Now the, the strips that you're going to cut it in need to be sort of roughly about the length, uh, the longest length of your hand, um, just to sort of give you a sort of a nice um, healthy crunch when you bite in and, and so you can sort of, it's sort of finger food, isn't it? So once you've cut all the bread up, you're just going to put it into your flat dish with the flat bottom um, and just get, basically what you want to do is you want to kind of try and get every single little finger of bread, um, every single side to be absolutely um, coated with um, egg. So what you need to do is you need to be a little bit patient and just sort of move it around and make sure that every edge um, gets sort of covered in egg like so. And then once you feel that you've succeeded in getting every single bit of bread covered in egg, just whip one more egg up um, and just basically just sort of layer it on the top of your uh, eggy bread. What you're going to do is you're going to leave it in the fridge for an hour. So once you've taken it out of the fridge, it kind of looks like this. As you can see, you can really tell it's the bread has soaked up the egg on top and the bread sort of expanded. And then put a little, tiny little bit of olive oil into a frying pan, put it on low to medium heat, and just add all of the eggy bread strips. So as you can see here, it's just sort of sizzling away, sort of nice and slowly. And it's just, just the egg, just at the bottom of the dish from earlier, just sort of making the most of everything, making sure we, nothing goes to waste. So just laying, layering that over the top. And sometimes what happens is um, they do sort of start to consolidate a little bit. So you need to take a spatula and you need to go through and just make sure that each uh, strip of eggy bread is separated. Add some seasoning, so salt, pepper and some Italian seasoning there. When you haven't got that you can just add some dry basil, something like that. And then keep going through again to uh, make sure that you separate each and every finger. And then what we're doing is, um, after a few minutes, and once it's sort of gone light, golden brown, light brown, uh, just turn them around to do the other side. So we're just going through now, with, again using a spatula and a, a plastic spoon, just sort of turning them around to ensure even cooking. And then to the other side, obviously, we're adding our seasoning again, the tiny bit of salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. Um, and then just sort of leaving them um, again like I said it does need to be a low to medium heat otherwise they will catch and burn so you need to sort of stand over it it only sort of takes um, probably about sort of five to ten minutes the whole process and then we're just serving up now so as you can see they're really fantastic if you do just leave them um, to sit for uh, perhaps two or three minutes uh, they do go hard and they're lovely and soft and crunchy so I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and recipe. Don't forget to visit my website for more cultural vlogs and recipes and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Bye.